Good afternoon. The next item of business this afternoon is consideration of business motion 5787 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a revised business programme for today. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press their request to speak button now. I would ask Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion 5757. Formally moved. 5787. No member has asked to speak against the motion. The question, therefore, is that we agree motion 5787. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next item of business is a statement by Nicola Sturgeon on security in Scotland. The First Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. Uh, I call the First Minister. Uh, Presiding officer, I'm grateful for the opportunity to give Parliament a further update following the awful events in Manchester on Monday night. In particular, I thought it would be appropriate to set out the implications of the decision taken last night by JTAC, the Joint Terrorism Analysis Centre, to raise the security threat level from severe to critical. I received briefing last night from the UK government's national security adviser on the reasons behind that decision. Uh, indeed, I've spoken to him again within the last hour. Now, clearly, it would not be appropriate to go into detail of what is an ongoing investigation. However, in summary, the increase in the threat level is due to a concern that the attacker who carried out the atrocity at the Manchester Arena may not have been acting alone and that therefore it is possible that a further terrorist attack could be imminent. However, it is important to be very clear that it remains the case that no specific threat to Scotland has been identified. In light of the increase in the threat level, I took the decision last night to convene a further meeting of the Scottish Government's Resilience Committee. That meeting took place in the early hours of this morning, involving the Deputy First Minister, the Justice Secretary, the Lord Advocate Police Scotland, uh, the Ambulance Service, the Fire and Rescue Service and our regional resilience partnerships. Uh, the Chief Executive of the Scottish Parliament also took part in that meeting. Uh, that was an opportunity for us to discuss the immediate implications for Scotland of the heightened security status. Clearly, this is something that will be kept under ongoing review, taking account of any intelligence available to the police. And as the Chief Constable indicated this morning, Police Scotland have now established a multi-agency coordination centre at Govan Police Station to lead the response across the country and with key partners. I will visit the centre later this afternoon to see its operations for myself and to receive further briefing about the nature of the response. However, I wanted to outline today as clearly as is possible at this stage, what some of the practical consequences for Scotland are likely to be over the next few days and what the public can expect to see. Now, I know that there has been media discussion in particular about the use of military personnel to support the police in their duties under what is known as Operation Temperer. Operation Temperer is an established plan for mobilising military support to the police service following a major terrorist attack. The decision about whether to authorise it is a matter for the UK government. Operation Temperer has two distinct phases. The first phase involves the deployment of the military to sites currently provided with armed policing by Ministry of Defence Police and Civil Nuclear Constabulary. And this frees up those armed police officers to support police forces across the UK. The second phase involves the deployment of military personnel to support the police to guard specific sites under the control and direction of the police. It's important to stress, presiding officer, that at present, only the first phase of Operation Temperer has been authorised. What this means in Scotland is that military personnel will be used at civil nuclear and Ministry of Defence sites uh, here in Scotland. There are a total of 12 such sites uh, in Scotland, nine Ministry of Defence and three civil nuclear sites. Uh, these sites, which are not accessible to the general public, will be secured by the military as of today. The presence of military personnel at sites of this nature, both in Scotland and across the UK, will free up the armed police who are normally on duty there. And these armed police will create a contingency resource which can be deployed across the UK. Any decision to make use of that contingency resource in Scotland would be for the Chief Constable. However, Police Scotland have no plans at this initial stage to do so. Uh, they have confirmed that they have reviewed security across Scotland to ensure that the right level of policing is in place and that they can provide that level of policing from within their own resources. Uh, this is, of course, something that will be kept under review uh, by Police Scotland. 
It is important to point out that Police Scotland has made significant progress in the last year to ensure an increase in armed policing to around 600 trained firearm officers in Scotland. They have also increased the number of firearms officers on duty at any one time. And as a result of the move to critical, Police Scotland has effectively doubled the number of armed response vehicles on patrol since Monday night. It is likely that the public will see more armed policing on the streets than usual, particularly at transport hubs and around city centres. However, and it's maybe worth stressing this point, given the understandable attention that Operation Temporary is receiving, we do not currently envisage that military personnel will be deployed on the streets in Scotland or in other public locations. However, as with all operational matters, this will be kept under review by the Chief Constable. As I said a moment ago, it is likely that for the duration of the increased threat level, the public will see more armed police on the streets than usual, particularly around transport hubs and city centres. Now, I want to be clear that this represents a specific response to the increased threat level following the Manchester attack. The threat level is kept under review and is only kept at this level as long as an attack is judged to be imminent. Therefore, it should not indicate a more general or long-term shift in Scotland to having armed police on regular patrol. Now, as I said yesterday, the police are also completing a review of every public event due to take place over the next few weeks. This includes a full review together with the Scottish Football Association of this weekend's Scottish Cup final to ensure that there is an appropriate deployment of police and stewards. Uh, this work is ongoing and the other major events being assessed include the visit on Friday of President Obama, the Edinburgh Marathon due to take place this weekend and the Lisbon Lions Memorial event in Glasgow. In addition, guidance is being issued to organisers of all large events. Now, I want to stress that the aim here of the police is to allow public events to continue as far as possible as normal. However, the public should anticipate additional safety measures at these events, and these measures may well include full body and bag searches and the presence of armed police. And for that reason, uh, as well as urging uh, the public to cooperate with these measures, I would urge people to make sure that they leave extra time if they're going to an event or travelling through an airport or a train station. In all of this, our very clear aim is to strike a balance between protecting public safety and ensuring that day-to-day -day life goes on as normal. And these enhanced security measures are part of how we aim to do that. And as always, the public have a role to play as well. And my message to the public is this. Uh, this is clearly a very anxious time, but there is no need to be alarmed. Many of the steps that are being taken now are precautionary. And I repeat, there is no intelligence of a specific threat to Scotland. However, I do ask the public to be vigilant and to report any concerns or suspicions that they may have to the police. Presiding officer, uh, before I finish today, I also want to provide a further update to the Chamber on the specific impact of Monday night's awful events. Uh, my thoughts, and I'm sure those of everyone in the Chamber, remain with the families uh, of those who've lost their lives, those victims who were injured, and with the people of Manchester more generally. I can advise the Chamber that Police Scotland family liaison officers are currently in Manchester providing support to the families of Laura McIntyre and Ailey McLeod from Barra. Now, I am aware that there is significant information in the media about these two young girls, particularly about the condition of Laura. However, their families have requested privacy at this extremely difficult time, and for that reason, I do not intend to go into further detail uh, today. I simply want to assure Parliament that as much support as possible is being and will continue to be provided to them at this unimaginably difficult time. I know also that we will all want them to know that they are very much in our thoughts. More widely, we know that in total, seven people have now presented at hospitals in Scotland. However, I am uh, pleased to report that all have since been discharged from hospital. It is, of course, possible that other people who witnessed the terror attack or its immediate aftermath uh, have returned to Scotland and are feeling distressed or upset. Anyone with concerns about themselves or their children should contact their GP for support. Health boards have been reissued with information providing guidance to adults and children who have witnessed traumatic events. As I mentioned in my statement yesterday, the events of Monday night were upsetting for all of us, but they may have been especially upsetting for young people. Uh, so this is a time to ensure that parents and teachers talk 
to children about any concerns that they have. We remain in contact with Young Scott uh, and with Education Scotland and local authorities to provide the guidance and support they need to help with those conversations. Presiding officer, uh, as I said earlier on, I know that this is an anxious time uh, for everybody across the UK. Again, my message is that people should be vigilant but not alarmed. The steps I have been describing today are precautionary. Most importantly of all, people should continue to go about their day-to-day -day business as normal. The Scottish Government resilience operation will remain active for the foreseeable future to ensure strategic coordination of our overall response, and I will continue to update Parliament as required. Uh, the Justice Secretary will also be happy to speak directly to any member who has concerns or queries. Uh, finally, let me end, I am sure on behalf of all of us, by putting on record again my heartfelt thanks to our emergency services. Their bravery and dedication is not news to us, but at times like these, it never fails to inspire. We are grateful to each and every one of them. Uh, and with those remarks, presiding officer, I'm happy to answer questions. Thank you very much. And the First Minister will now take questions for the next 20 minutes. If members wish to ask a question, I would encourage you to press your request to seat button. I call on Ruth Davidson. Thank you, and I thank the First Minister for that statement. Uh, the Defence and Security Services have been clear about the threat of further attack, which is why the threat level has been raised to critical. In Scotland, this means visible armed policing at key locations, a review of security and hosting at major sporting and entertainment events, and further enhanced security checks to ensure that people are kept safe. We should be vigilant, we should be patient as access to certain events and locations take longer, but what we shouldn't be is fearful, nor should we be cowed. As Chief Superintendent Roddy Irvin of Police Scotland said this morning, worth remembering folks, armed Scottish cops are still just Scottish cops. If you say hello, they'll say hello back. If you smile, they'll smile back. As we face down the current threat, I know that the sight of armed police officers and service personnel at key locations may be unsettling, but there can be no doubt that their response is necessary, and we thank them for their professionalism and bravery. It is vital that the police and the security services have everything necessary to get on with the job in the coming days, and as we said yesterday, the terrorists will not win, and by meeting their cowardice with calm, implacable defiance, we will show that to be the case. So can the First Minister reassure the Chamber that if Police Scotland require any extra resources over the coming days, and particularly this weekend, then the Scottish Government will step in to help? First Minister. Yes, I can give that assurance. Uh, to expand uh, slightly on that, as I have indicated to the Chamber, I am in uh, regular discussions uh, right now with the Chief Constable and with Police Scotland. Uh, he participated in our uh, meeting last night. I've spoken to him today. I will see him in Glasgow uh, later on today. He has assured me that from within the resources he has, uh, he is able to provide the enhanced coverage, uh, particularly around armed police officers that I have spoken about today. But I will continue to ensure that the Scottish Government, uh, myself, the Justice Secretary and the entire Government uh, liaises closely with the police to make sure that we are responding uh, to any need for support and resources uh, that they request. I think uh, there are two points, one of which I made in my statement, one of which I will add today, that we should uh, bear in mind to give us uh, a level of assurance Firstly, and uh, just the Secretary made a statement in this Parliament, I believe, about this very issue uh, some months ago. The police uh, decided to increase the trained armed officers that they had available to them. Uh, that has been work in progress throughout this year. Uh, and as a result, uh, there has been a significant uplift and uh, there are now around 600 uh, armed uh, officers uh, available for uh, deployment by the police. Uh, secondly, of course, and this is something we've uh, discussed many, many times in this parliament over the last decade, we have, uh, as a parliament, made sure uh, in our budgeting that we have maintained the number of regular police officers uh, on the streets of Scotland. So both of these uh, moves, I think, give our police a level of resources uh, that gives them the confidence uh, that the Chief Constable is able to give me. However, all of that said does not take away from the enormous pressure that our police officers work under, not just during times like this, but generally. Um, and we will continue to do everything we can to make sure that our brave uh, policemen and women have the support that they deserve. Kezia Dugdale. Thank you. In light of the new threat level, extra security is visible in this building, around Westminster, embassies and other civic locations. 
Yet we're all too aware that many of the recent attacks across Europe have been at markets or high streets, music venues or sporting occasions. So I wonder whether the First Minister can provide any additional reassurance about what uh, people across Scotland can expect going about their everyday lives. And separately to that, if there's any practical steps that the public can take to support the police in their work. First Minister. Well, let me answer that question just in three quick ways. Firstly, uh, I think the most uh, visible uh, difference that the public, the general public, not everybody in every single street corner in Scotland, but the most obvious visible difference will be more armed officers on the streets. They will be uh, particularly around, as I say, transport hubs, uh, crowded places, city centres. But I think there will be a lot of people in Scotland uh, who do not normally see armed police, who will see armed police while this uh, increased threat level is in place. Uh, secondly, in terms of what the general public can do, uh, the public have such a key role to play here. It is the responsibility of the police to keep the public safe, but we all know that the cooperation of the public is an important part of that. So my message uh, again to the public is to be vigilant. Anything at all that is of concern uh, or creates suspicion, make sure that is reported to the police. And more generally, uh, be cooperative and patient, as I know the vast majority of the public will be. There will be inconvenience over at the next uh, few days or however long uh, this increased threat level uh, lasts. It will take longer for people to get into places that they're visiting um, and there may be other inconveniences. But if you are finding yourself taking longer to get into a sporting event or some other event, just remember the reason for that delay is for your own safety. Um, and uh, more uh, generally in terms of events, I said yesterday and I repeated today, there is a review of all public events ongoing. Um, without going into too much detail, uh, there is clearly a, a broad spectrum of public events that take place. There are the uh, events like football matches that take place in very uh, confined spaces over a, a limited period of time. There are then uh, less precise events, the Edinburgh Marathon, for example, this weekend, or people uh, at you know, other, other kind of outdoor uh, festivals, marketplaces. Now, the police have all of that uh, under review in their assessment process. And uh, because of the different nature of some of these events, the responses uh, will vary from one to the other. Um, but what we must do is have confidence and trust in the police to carry out those assessments and make sure they're providing the appropriate level of response. And I can assure the Chamber that work is well underway. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. Those who are asked to keep our society safe have a difficult job to do and they have our support. We have always accepted that in the appropriate circumstances, the deployment of armed personnel can be appropriate and necessary. But the judgment is a finely balanced one. The sight of armed personnel, whether police or military, can give reassurance. It can also increase public anxiety. So can I ask the First Minister, what are the criteria that would need to apply for this additional deployment of armed personnel under Operation Tempera to be stood down? And secondly, can I ask for an assurance or for the First Minister to seek an assurance from the UK government that this additional deployment will have no impact on the legitimate expression of political protest or public uh, peaceful protest, uh, including, for example, by the peace movement at MOD sites? First Minister. Uh, well, firstly, in terms of the deployment of armed police, um, I, I think that balance that Patrick Harvey talks about is very important. And I know the police believe that balance is important. When we've uh, discussed uh, issues of armed policing in this chamber before, sometimes it struck me that we don't always, and I take my share of the responsibility for this, we don't always distinguish between what are two uh, often separate issues. Firstly, is the number of armed police uh, we have trained uh, and able to be deployed. And secondly, uh, the circumstances in which they are deployed. Now, in terms of the first, uh, the police have been increasing uh, the numbers. But it, secondly, in terms of the deployment, it's very important to stress that routinely, outside of periods like this one, uh, the general rule of policing in Scotland is that we do not have routinely armed police patrolling the streets. There are very uh, limited circumstances in which armed police are deployed. Uh, so firearms incidents and incidents where uh, loss of life uh, is, is an issue. Um, during instances like this, though, uh, we will see armed police deployed more generally in our streets. But that's why I was uh, very careful to say today we should not assume that that is a general move uh, to uh, more routine uh, armed policing of, of officers on uh, patrol. This is a specific response. How long that response lasts will be very much uh, driven by the decisions taken by JTAC. Uh, the JTAC decision to increase the threat level didn't in and of itself mean that 
Operation Tempera would be invoked, but that decision was also taken uh, last night. Uh, the, the duration of both of these things will very much flow from the uh, progress in the investigation that is underway. Uh, the threat level is because there is a fear that this attacker was not acting alone and that there is a, a risk of an imminent attack. Uh, that's not my decision uh, to do that or to uh, downgrade it again, but the decision will be uh, driven by the state of that investigation. Um, secondly, in terms of uh, civil liberties and protest, I think our police uh, in Scotland do an excellent job uh, in terms of uh, supporting people's absolute right uh, to peaceful protest, and I would not expect that to be uh, different at this time. Uh, but all of us, uh, I think, in all walks of life, should be mindful of the additional pressure that our police are under uh, right now. And, you know, as part of our contribution uh, to meeting the needs of this particular circumstance, uh, be as cooperative uh, with the police as they go about their tasks. But peaceful protest is an absolutely fundamental part of our democracy, and we should never forget that it is our democracy uh, these attackers are trying to undermine, and we should not allow them to do that. Willie Rennie to be followed by Christina McKelvey. Willie Rennie. Yeah, I'm grateful for the First Minister's statement and for the concern that she's expressed on behalf of us all to the victims, their families, and the rescue services who are still dealing with the aftermath of this horrific incident. I have complete confidence in the painstaking and intelligent work being carried out by the security services and the recommendations that they have made. They have to strike a balance. We want our country safe. Citizens should have confidence, all without creating a climate of fear. And in Edinburgh today, in the railway stations, on the buses, in the streets, like in the Royal Mile, people are out in their numbers going about their normal lives. That tells me the balance is right. So can I ask the First Minister how often she expects to review those arrangements and how she will judge if the balance is being maintained? First Minister. Well, as I said, all of these arrangements uh, are under ongoing review. And uh, while I have uh, a significant part to play in these assessments, let me stress that in terms of security and intelligence and the level of the, the threat here. These are decisions that will be reviewed and judged on an ongoing basis uh, by JTAC, rightly and uh, independently so. In terms of the uh, resources that the police in Scotland deploy, uh, those uh, judgments and assessments will be made on an ongoing basis by the police led by the Chief Constable because that is his operational, independent operational responsibility. Uh, I, uh, through the Scottish Government resilience uh, arrangements, will make sure that we're providing the strategic oversight of all of that, making sure that we are understanding those judgments, giving support uh, to the, the outcomes of those judgments and, of course, uh, providing the vitally important uh, accountability to Parliament and to the public. Uh, so these are judgments and assessments that will be made uh, by all of these different players in this on an ongoing basis. Um, and I undertake, as I did in my statement, uh, to keep Parliament updated and advised uh, of any changes to this uh, as often as Parliament considers it appropriate. Christina McKelvey, to be by Murder <coughs> Fraser. Thank, thank you, President Officer. Given that we have the freedom to live in a country that has policing by consent, does the First Minister agree with me that in times such as these, it is crucial that we embrace and uphold the values of democracy, human rights and the rule of law? First Minister. Oh, absolutely. Um, I think that is you know, what is fundamental and at the heart of, of all of this. We know, and we, we've, we discussed it yesterday, we've discussed it in the past, that terrorists, uh, th their purpose is to undermine democracy and the rule of law and the values and the freedoms that we all hold so dear. Um, and it's vitally important that we don't allow them to do so. Uh, this question, of course, has particular relevance right now as we are in the middle of a, a general election campaign where all of us as politicians uh, will also want to strike the right balance between respect for those affected by this atrocity, but also making sure that we don't allow uh, the, the, the ultimate expression of democracy and election to be undermined. And I think we will all be very mindful of how we strike that right balance in terms of getting back to uh, the business of the election campaign uh, as quickly, but also as decently uh, as possible. Uh, so, you know, these values are, you know, we, we talked about this in the, the aftermath of the Westminster attack. You know, there are so many things in this chamber and uh, elsewhere that we disagree on and that is absolutely legitimate but I think we can all come together and unite around these core fundamental values and be absolutely resolute in our determination that they will not be undermined. 
Murder Fraser to be followed by Ivan McKee. Murder Fraser. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. The First Minister mentioned in her statement the planned visit of President Obama to Scotland later this week. Can the First Minister tell us if discussions have taken place directly with President Obama's team about this, and if we are expecting this to go ahead as planned? First Minister. Uh, well, firstly, Police Scotland are carrying out a review of all of the major events, and that will include the one um, uh, involving President Obama. Obviously, there will be uh, security additional to that provided by Police uh, Scotland uh, for a visit of this nature involving somebody uh, in his position. Um, so those discussions are uh, undoubtedly ongoing, and I, I don't think it would be appropriate to go into any more detail of them. Um, the, I am not anticipating anything other than that event will go ahead, but I want to be very clear that the police are undertaking a process here of reviewing all of these events that will uh, lead to them making decisions. Uh, and the aim of not just this visit, but all of these events is to allow them to go ahead. Uh, but that's not, and I'm not talking here just to avoid any uh, hairs running, I'm not talking here about the President Obama visit, but in all of these visits, um, of course, uh, it cannot be guaranteed that there will be none cancelled over the uh, course of the, the next couple of weeks. But the aim is to make sure arrangements are put in place that allow these v v events to go ahead and allow them to go ahead safely. Uh, and I, uh, as I say, fully expect uh, that to be the case with the visit of President Obama on Friday. Ivan McKee to be followed by Claire Baker. Uh, thank you. Um, attacks like that in Manchester are sadly an all too common occurrence in many countries around the world. Can I ask the First Minister what ongoing discussions have been held with the governments of other countries regarding the security threats that all nations face? First Minister. <clears throat> well, there are obviously ongoing discussions, principally with the, the intelligence and security services, with intelligence and security uh, services of other countries to share intelligence and to make sure uh, that uh, as much mutual protection is given from uh, that sharing of information. Uh, the Scottish uh, Government has kept uh, updated in terms of intelligence or security threats through principally uh, the National Security uh, Advisor. And we have uh, discussions on a whole range of matters with other uh, governments uh, on an ongoing uh, basis. But that principle of intelligence sharing is one uh, that is very much, I know, at the heart of the, the approach that is taken to intelligence and security uh, in the UK. Claire Baker to be followed by Claire Hockey. Uh, can the First Minister expand on what ongoing discussions there are with the UK Government about the use of Operation Tempera? And while the First Minister stresses there is no specific threat to Scotland, many people will be looking to travel across the UK this holiday weekend. Um, what advice and reassurances can be given to them? First Minister. Well, in terms of Operation Tempera, it is an established uh, process uh, dealing with military support for the police after uh, terrorist attacks. It is a decision of the UK government to invoke Operation Tempera. As I explained earlier on, it has two phases, and the first phase of it was invoked uh, and authorised last night. Um, it is not inevitable that when the threat level goes up, that Operation Tempera is invoked, but that did uh, happen uh, last night. The, the duration of that will be very much uh, a matter for the UK government, but it will be driven uh, very much by the progress of the investigation. I, I, I would stress again, I'm, I'm repeating what I said earlier on, but the reason for the increase in the threat level is a, a concern that this individual is not acting alone, that there may be others out there and that there may be other attacks that are imminent. Clearly, as the investigation, as we hope it does, progresses uh, and uh, arrests and brings to justice anybody that may be involved in that, then that risk hopefully will lessen. But these are judgments for uh, the security services uh, to uh, inform and for the UK government uh, to take. In terms of uh, the, the public overall, I, I think, obviously, I'm making very clear, as I did yesterday, we have no intelligence of a specific threat in Scotland. Now, you know, that uh, is the case as of now. I, I stands to reason that that, that may change in future. Uh, but that is the, the, the case right now. So the, the measures that I'm talking about here are vitally important, but they are precautionary. Uh, now, in, in many respects, I think across the UK, much of what is being done just now is precautionary because of that concern I spoke about. But I think, and it's not for me to, uh, to, to, to give these messages for other parts of the UK, but I think I can say with some confidence that the message I'm giving in Scotland would be the one that is given by governments in other parts of the UK. Uh, be vigilant, but do not be alarmed. Uh, these are precautionary measures uh, as a response to the circumstances in Manchester and the progress of the investigation so far. They're there to keep people safe um, and people therefore should not be alarmed but be continue uh, to be vigilant. Claire Hockey to be followed by Jackson Carlin. 
Thank you, Presiding Officer. To ask the First Minister what resources are available to those in Scotland who have been affected by the attack in Manchester. First Minister. Um, I, I touch on some of this in my statement. We have uh, on the ground in Manchester Police Scotland family liaison officers who are providing uh, specific support to the families of the two girls uh, from Barra, and uh, that support will continue for as long as is, is necessary. Uh, in addition to that, for people returning home, I uh, outlined yesterday some of the work Police Scotland were doing in partnership with the British Transport Police to identify any possible witnesses coming back to Scotland who may uh, have information that is important to the investigation. Um, there will also be uh, amongst those people or separately people who've come back who perhaps didn't witness anything but nevertheless will be experiencing uh, upset or, or trauma because of uh, what they've been through uh, and we're working with the health service to make sure that the appropriate advice and information is available for uh, people in those circumstances. Uh, there is also, and I've said this again uh, today as well as yesterday, uh, I'm particularly mindful of the impact uh, on children, not just children who are at the concert, but children who are watching these uh, scenes on their television uh, who will feel uh, unsettled and scared. And therefore, we've uh, worked with Education uh, Scotland and councils, uh, as well as Young Scott, to make sure that there is information available uh, to help with conversations with young people. Uh, for those who haven't seen the information that Young Scott uh, distributed yesterday, I would recommend you having a look at it because it is very good and I think anybody who might be a parent themselves or uh, speaking to a teacher or anybody who has interaction with young people would find it very useful to try to, to help that. So there's a whole range of support in place but again like all aspects of this we will keep this un under review to make sure that anybody who has been affected and who needs uh, support is able to access uh, that support in an appropriate way. And finally Jackson Carlin. Uh, Presiding officer, this outrage has taken place, of course, during a general election campaign, and at some point the parties will decide that it's appropriate to recommence campaigning. However, there may be many small community organisations who will have been planning to hold public hustings meetings, who will hear what the First Minister has said about public gatherings. Some of these can attract very considerable numbers of people and will wonder what their responsibility should be in those circumstances. I wonder what advice and assurance the First Minister would give. First Minister. And a very relevant question, uh, given the, the time we're in just now. My, my, my general advice would be to go ahead uh, as planned, uh, but I would supplement that by saying that anybody who's organising uh, any local event, not just the local hustings, that has any concerns or who just wants some advice and assurance to contact their local police uh, commander uh, and get that advice locally. I know the police are, uh, will be very happy to, to provide that advice locally. Um, it's, it goes to the heart of what I've tried to say throughout this. We want people to carry on as normal. Uh, we do not want life to grind to a halt or to become uh, abnormal uh, here. So, but people just have to take sensible precautions. So uh, carry on as normal. If you've got any concerns, the police are there to try to address those concerns for you. Uh, thank you, uh, members. That concludes our statement on security. We'll now move on to the next item of business, which is portfolio questions. We'll just take a few seconds for members to change seats.